Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. Today we're going to be building a couple farms and starting another mega building, which is going to be super fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go over to my handy dandy signs over here. A couple of these we actually did last episode. So the horse we did last episode, the sea pickle farm, and all of those we did last episode. So the two we're going to do today is a more compact cocoa farm and a berry farm using foxes um so yeah let's do the redstone first because i like redstone let me show you guys the cocoa farm first I, you know i could just jump straight to it absolutely no cut necessary and if any of you are long time watchers of my channel you guys know oh don't you already have a cocoa farm i do but it's very very bad and it's manual so i have these pistons with some cocoa when i press this button all of it shifts up and down and all of the cocoa drops into these hoppers and then i have to manually collect the beans and replant them and i said no i want something automatic and i'm gonna probably end up doing that with most of my farms anything that's not automatic i'll probably build it's like i have to make a new automatic vine i have to make an automatic nether wart which is very hard on a side note but yeah, I decided I'll start with the cocoa and make an automatic farm, you know, basically an advanced version. What do you, do you have anything to trade me? Okay, you have some mini blocks, which I'll, nah, I'm good. Okay, so um, I decided to build that farm in this plot of land right here. So again, if you're a long time watcher, you know that right next to my boy Steve over here, the, the large Steve nothing sat here it was just absolutely barren and empty kind of like how these areas are over here and i decided you know what <clears throat> let me go ahead and build the coco farm right next to steve and i can you know do some cool things so i guess i should first start out with let me just use the farm and then i'll explain to you guys the redstone and some of the decoration okay so imagine i'm strolling around and i want to use this farm what i would do is come over here my storage area Grab a little bit of cocoa here. I'll just grab like one stack just um, because that's kind of all I need Then I want to fill up my inventory With anything that's not cocoa because it's gonna be dropped to me and again I'll explain the redstone later. I'm just giving you guys, you know, if I was just trying to use the farm how I would do it Come over here flick this lever then I would just quickly run back to the front here. Oh, very important. This is all my own design. No tutorial. So this is just all me. And I would stand here. And I need to get the timing right. Ah, I just had the timing right there. Oh, that, okay, there's the timing. F3T. Let go of my mouse. And, yeah. I Right now, I am not holding anything. My mouse, keyboard, nothing. I could just straight up walk away from my computer. And... I get myself tons and tons of cocoa beans. So once again, I want to emphasize this is my own design. I designed it in a redstone world. Um, so if you guys want a tutorial, I can make one. But the design itself, you know, it could be better. But it's mine. So it's more special to me. And yeah, all of the cocoa collects in these chests over here. You can see I already did a, a bit of farming. And I got two double chests full in just a couple, in like an hour or two. So um, does the farm work? Yes, it is. Is it the best farm out there? Probably not, but it is my own. Therefore, it is special to me. So let me grab all of my rockets. Um, now is the actual hard part. I showed you guys the farm, how it works, but now I have to try my best to explain it. So let me go ahead and do I have spectator mode up? No. Okay. So let me just go ahead and go in spec spectator mode. Um, and I'll show you guys the outside first just to get that out of the way. So since it's it's a cocoa farm, you know, you're in the jungle. I decided to make a jungle themed. So the outside of the building is um, a lot of jungle wood with some iron bars, a lot of the mossy brick, a little bit of lichen. And I'm, I kind of made this, uh, I wouldn't call it like tribal design, but it's more of just, it's very primitive stone, wood, lanterns, very pillar pillar like you know there's a lot of like uh stone supports so yeah made it look very old and mossed up and overgrown so this is the farm itself and then i have um storage for the uh, bone meal up here but around it because obviously i have to fill in the rest of the space 
I built a nice, um, basically man-made jungle area with climbable, you know, surfaces. So what I did is I filled this densely, or I filled this area in densely with these jungle trees. And I just realized my textures are off. Let me go ahead and, um, let me just take vanilla tweaks off just for a moment here. Um, so you guys can see what, kind of what it actually looks like. And then I went through and, you know, a couple, you know, let me go into survival for this part. Now that I showed you kind of a good view of it, you want survival. And I have like a jungle gym area where I have different platforms on all of the trees. And then I have different, you know, areas. Like if I wanted to go up there, I would have a ladder here. And I can come up. So just like a fun little area where I can kind of run around and act like I'm Tarzan or something. And then I made a cool little feature. You guys know Steve. He's been here for, you know, like four or five years at this point. Well, he always just kind of stood there and there's, you know, there's nothing actually inside of him. So I decided to incorporate this jungle area. I made a little bridge where you can actually go inside of Steve. So there's nothing in here, but, you know, hey, now I can actually, oh, and I can't really get back up. Uh, okay, we'll do that, and then I just take this one block. Okay, I can just take that one block out. So now we have an area into Steve using this bridge, and I'll run around just a little bit more so you guys can kind of... Where to start? Because this farm has a couple different components. Obviously, there is the component which where I plant. There's the component with, that spits out the bone meal. There is the collection component, and there is the auto-feed component. So... Yeah, let's start with the basic component of the planting and unplanting. So I have over here a piece of jungle wood, which you put the cocoa on. And I have a piston that pushes it in and out, breaking the actual cocoa bulbs themselves. And obviously, when that breaks, it drops the excess cocoa. I have, um, this is the clock that I flicked on here at the beginning. So this clock runs most of the farm, actually. It pushes this piston back and forth and it also controls the bone meal feeding so to grow the cocoa i need bone meal so i have three dispensers pushing in bone meal basically at the same rate that this piston is pushing out back and forth and that creates a perfect you know one two three fully grown break one two three fully grown break it's not perfect but it works very very well for what i need it to do um, above the dispensing area is my auto refill. So obviously I don't want to refill it with bone meal every time I get low. So I have these absolutely massive storage areas with a tons of access bone meal. But yeah, so that is that whole system. Now we can move on to the collection, which um, basically the cocoa breaks. If it breaks right here, it drops in here. But if for some reason it ends up popping out, it just goes down the stream and it falls into one, two, three, depending how far it goes. Now you guys might be wondering, this is really extra. Why couldn't I just stick with a single hopper here? And let me tell you guys, um, this, far, this farm actually works so well that it actually gets backed up. If I only use one hopper, items will stack and they will end up despawning. So I had to use a multiple hopper array. The only two ways to really do that is using ice and water. And I can't do ice. Well, I might have been able to do ice. But anyway, I didn't want to do ice. So I did water. So basically, now the only other part I need to talk about is the the refill area as far as the cocoa in my hand. So obviously, to plant cocoa, I need cocoa. And if I only have like a stack in my hand, that goes away in like 30 seconds. I need something AFKable. So I made this suple, uh, suple, a super simple system where i have cocoa in this chest here and it gets fed up into these droppers so i'm standing right here this dropper is feeding me cocoa that i am planting any extra falls back down to the hopper and makes a continual loop so it goes up down up down up down and i just use it um pretty pretty simple i have some extra storage for cocoa here and as far as the timings i actually i think i stole the pulse from this so this timer runs the piston the bone meal but also it runs over here and f does the feeding of the cocoa beans to me also okay guys so let's go ahead and move on into the berry farm so once again another item that is um 
pretty useless overall. It's not really used for much, and it kind of sucks as a food. It only has one job, and it even sucks at that one job, but this world is not done unless I have farmed everything. So I, I looked into the options as far as how to do a berry farm, and I figured, or when I looked it up, the way that I liked the best is using foxes. So if you have a berry bush that has fully grown berries on it, a fox will actually grab the berry and put it in its mouth, and then it can drop them. And luckily, a couple episodes ago, I actually collected foxes for my little area over here, for my little zoo. So I collected foxes, so I was able to pretty easily get, you know, get some more here. And I built the farm, spoiler, it's already built, so, um, I built it over here next to my horse track area that you saw last episode. Now, you actually saw the fox farm last episode, but again, I wanted to make it for this episode. But I'll take you guys through the design. It's actually one of the simplest ones I've built in this entire game. So, you have a row of dirt with bushes on them. These bushes obviously grow berries. You can see he just he has berries in his mouth. Um, yeah, when they fully grow, the fox picks it up and then I forgot how he drops them I think he drops it when he finds another berry but when he drops it it'll just land on the dirt here and I've got a hopper minecart running through the entire area picking up you can see he literally picked up some berries there and it brings them over to this very small unloading area you guys have seen this unloader a million times if the hopper has anything in it, it'll stop and unload. Once this becomes empty, it just sends it back out. And I just had it drop all of the items into here. And then we could take these. I don't have a super massive storage area for these just yet. So I just stick them in these chests over here. But that is the entirety of this farm, actually. I, I don't know what I needed to talk about. Um, it's as simple as that. But yeah, uh, and once again, uh, I just had a very small strip of land. And I'm like, you know what? This is perfect for a tileable, small, you know, very thin farm. So I thought that is perfect. I'll stick it right here. <laughs> Just a very little compact berry farm. Okay, so I made a promise last episode that this big building would have, pro would have, I would get progress on it before I came back. But I decided that I want to record the segments for those two redstone, um, redstone machines before i actually did more so what i'm going to do now is um oh and i explained it last episode i guess i'll just very quickly explain it again for those that didn't watch last episode um this is a random build i don't know what's going to be in it but my little brain was like hey david you haven't built a mega structure in a little while so you need to do that so that's exactly what i'm doing you can see it has kind of like a four pillar style it's going to be like a basalt mountain it's got four pillars all those are going to rise into basically a giant mountain and i'll have four large door openings one on each side so it's going to be somewhat symmetrical but the size of each pillar is a little bit different you can see that i already made the 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 entirety of one pillar right here now I'm working on the second pillar, and I didn't want to build the pillars until I give you guys, you know, a good sample size. But, yep, so there's going to be giant basalt pillars. I don't know if I'm going to have lava running through it or anything, but I'll decide that later. And then, like I said, I have the doors, and this area, I'm going to be using the glass. You can see that it's just like one piece of glass. It doesn't actually have this fog effect, but if you leave one space in between each one, you get this nice little effect. So, I'm going to make the entirety... Of the bottom in between the four four pillars i'm gonna make into glass so i gotta clear up this bottom area uh, while i'm at it but yeah so now that i've recorded the redstone segments i'm gonna go ahead and put a couple probably million hours into finishing that and i'll show you guys what i have when i'm done okay everybody so it's been a couple days i've been doing a lot of playing and i can finally show you guys what i've done now i don't know about you guys but i think that looks super sick so we're gonna walk up to it i'm gonna show you guys what it looks like inside and all of that good stuff and then i'll do a spectator mode fly around but yeah i think it turned out pretty good it's mostly what i envisioned not a hundred percent but if i built what i envisioned this would take much much longer and this already itself took a very long time but Yep, so then let me go inside, and I did do that uh, trick that I was telling you guys with the glass, and I just ended up going with gray,
because or technically light gray just to give it that smoky effect so instead of like red with lava or blue with water or green as like toxic i thought you know what smoke would probably just be the best so i went ahead and at the bottom of this entire structure you could you could basically little like just make out the corners of where i built it i made it all made out of glass this took a lot of glass more than you would think um, I completely exhausted my uh, sand supplies and I ended up actually going back and getting more but yeah. this is it so that's what that looks like and like I said I had the four doors and then to get this effect on the glass I did have to let some uh, light shine through from the natural sky so you could see I did poke a couple holes along um, along basically the entirety of I don't, I don't know if I should call it a mountain or a pillar uh, but around the entirety of the pillar, which is, um, which looks a bit weird, but you can't actually notice it from the outside, but it does give, uh, it this little smoky effect, which is nice. And then you can kind of see even, I made the smoky effect go below even the doorways just to give it that kind of like effect of floating, you know, and they do extend all the way out here. And yeah, I guess let me show you guys maybe a little bit more of an aerial view and there's our raid farm. See, yep, there it is. There's a couple things I'm building in the background, so just ignore those for now. And actually, let me just go into... Oh, I'm using a, my silent keyboard, so this is a little bit of a struggle here, but bang. You can, let's go ahead and give it a view. Now, it's not nighttime anymore. Um, I think it does actually look a lot better during the nighttime. Um, but I guess I should probably show you guys in the daytime and the nighttime. So this is the building. You can see I did end up using uh, lava casts across the entire thing. Again, mostly because during the nighttime it looks really, really well. Or really well. It looks really nice during the nighttime. It gives it, you know, that glow effect that I kind of wanted. Makes it look, like, you know, dangerous. And it gives it a bit more color because just the basalt on its own was a little boring. And there's not much I could do to spruce up the basalt on its own um, without kind of destroying the vibe of the mountain. And I did actually have to work quite a bit with the lava because um, if you notice, the lava does stop at certain places and that's not natural. I had to get the lava to stop. Like if I placed that lava right there and didn't do anything with it, it would just flow all the way to the bottom. So there is a lot more work uh, into the lava than you might think. And you can see at the bottom there, it's a little bit, it's not completely uniform, the little gas area, but... Um, I didn't want to extend it past the doorways because if it did, it might start looking a bit weird. Um, so I kind of made it halfway where it's like all of the building is in the smoke, but it still looks like it still has a little bit of structural support from the outsides. But yeah, if we go a little closer to the lava, you could see that it drips down. And then I, I built very small ledges to basically just stop the lava and you could see it across everywhere. You could see it here. Um, if you if we go inside, you can see that it's actually like there's little little cups little pockets where it stopped so that's how that's how i made this effect of the lava coming down and it's not just like constantly flowing i did make sure to give them a stop on each of them but yeah um this building is technically done i have a few ideas i can't put anything above because it's actually a build limit you could see across the world kind of where the build limit is it is uh at build limit um so the only things i could do is more things to the outside to spruce it up but honestly as far as the outside i think it looks nice um really the only work i have left is inside and a couple of ideas that i had for this is maybe adding some large structure up here in the middle kind of how mumbo had the golden heart in his maybe add like a giant eye or a giant crystal or something over here just so when we're down at the bottom inside of uh the smoke we can kind of like look up and see something glorious but that is going to be a project for another day but yep this is done like i said it was it was a pretty random little me like yeah, i'm not gonna even call it a mega build but it, i mean it's <laughs> it's pretty large most people would consider this a mega build considering it took like 10 to 20 hours um especially with the, the lava um, yeah but that was the small showcase of this Let's move on to a couple more things that I've been doing. Okay, guys, so we're back in survival mode as we're falling. Let me tell you guys what we're going to do next. I've been really inspired to dig. 
Um, I don't know why. I just... I, I was looking at our boards and kind of looking at things that we haven't done yet. And the one thing I haven't done yet is falling games and digging and stuff of that aesthetic. So I did two, three, three things, right? I did three things and one of them I'm still working on. So let me just show you. Um, so I don't, again, I the whole point of this world is to kind of get one of everything one of every type of building one of every type of farm and all that so i thought hey i don't really have a hollowed out chunk somewhere in my world so random this little spot right in this corner it's super super empty and i just wanted to put something in so i thought hey this is the perfect time to quite literally empty out a chunk that's it um i did this for no other reason just to have it i have an emptied out chunk um, is it, is it F3G? Yeah, so, uh, is it, is it, so it is an exact chunk. I forgot if I didn't do it on an exact chunk, so it's a little uneven, but, um, at least I could say it is, uh, you know, it's an actual chunk, chunk, you know. Um, but yeah, all the way to the bottom, all the way to bedrock, can I, I was debating on leaving it open or not, but I thought putting glass on top of it is better, so I could at least, like, walk across it and, like, look down. Um, so yeah, that was another one of the bucket list things, is make a hollowed out chunk. Now, I thought, the hollowed out chunk is cool, but I want a hollowed out chunk from top to bottom so I could jump across. So, that led me to coming over by my IRL house and, um, of course our little Trump Tower here. And you can see that I hollowed out another thing. Now, this isn't a chunk, it's actually much larger than a chunk. It's, so it's one chunk, okay, not much larger. It's about one chunk, plus adding four to five blocks on each side, but it is completely hollowed out again, and it goes back down to bedrock. But this time I placed some water down there, so I could have like um, a sort of a drop game. So my original plan for this was to have a drop game, so I could come up here, and then I could jump and do, you know, a, a normal dropper game and fall all the way down there. So basically, I built this as just a proof of, you know, bucket list of I can go from the highest point down to the lowest point. And I was going to add obstacles, but now here's my issue. After I dug out the hole, I thought, well, I can't really put a dropper game right here because I don't want this building to be blocked by just random things. I don't think it doesn't look nice. It'll ruin the effect of the building and the wall. So I left it as I have one cleared out chunk over there that I can look at, one cleared out chunk that I could just straight jump down for maybe testing purposes. I don't know, but just a falling. Now, this is where uh, I told you guys I'm, I'm, I've been into digging recently. I'm going to build one more giant hole, and this is actually what I'm currently working on right here. You might have noticed this while we were flying around. So I've got four dugout chunks. Now, they're not, these ones are once again not exact chunks, but it's, uh, it's two blocks. So they're basically a chunk, they're just not lined up, but I just did them so they, you know, they fit uniform. But this is where I'm actually going to build a drop game, and you can see that I have four holes. So I'm going to be building four separate dropping games, maybe an easy, hard, or easy, medium, hard, impossible. And the building of it itself is going to be the hard part. Right now I'm just doing the digging. So you can see that this hole over here is completely done all the way to the bottom. This hole is completely done all the way to the bottom. This hole is completely done all the way to the bottom. And I am in the middle of clearing out this last one. So I know I haven't been recording a lot of the processes. I've just been kind of recording the ends. But the method that I used to do this was a TNT on all corners and one TNT down in the middle all the way down. And I blew them up and it basically blew up most of it. And I just went around and basically picked off the edges. Um, and I will probably fill in those holes. But for now, I'm just going to finish the digging. Um, and I do have a beacon here. So whatever I have to mine, I get to mine a lot quicker and whatever I can keep from the dig I'm trying to it's like most of the cobble I'm keeping a little bit of the dirt and here's just some of the access things You know, I got a little bit of coal a little bit of iron. Here's some of the leftover TNT that I'm gonna use on the last hole um, but Yeah, let me just fly up a little bit and give you guys a little bit of better look but like I said This is our next pretty big project. I just finished this 
and I dug a bunch of holes, but those are just holes, you know. Um, but for this one, um, this is what I'm going to be working on between this episode and next episode, basically. I think it's really, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's even going to look super cool because, you know, I'm going to have all of these obstacles here. And this is where we're going to be jumping from. I did make the little platform. I had to dig a hole in it to let the beacon go through, but... Oop, I actually missed how that happened. Ah, so there we go. So yeah, this is where we're going to be at, and then we're going to be jumping and whatever f dropping obstacles I have in here. That's what we're going to play with. Um, good thing I had one of those on. Those are always super, super useful. But guys, um, yeah, I'm going to end this episode off here. We did a lot for today. Two farms. Uh, finished a mega build and are starting our next somewhat mega build, but it's more of a mega game um, So let's go ahead and put one of those on but Yeah, guys. Thanks for watching if you did enjoy make sure to like and a comment as a support to my channel And I will see you guys later. God bless and goodbye